to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at The Mean One, released in 2022. The Mean One is a horror movie with the Grinch as its killer. Take a story that everybody knows and present it with a horror comedy twist. Only he's not called The Grinch. He's called The Mean One, based on the song sung by Thurl Ravenscroft, whose voice is as cool as his name. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Unlike Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, this slasher source material didn't recently enter the public domain. Instead, the mean one skirts by copyright issues by claiming to be a parody. It certainly is a comedic send-up, complete with lots of loving references to Dr. Seuss books, but man, does the mean one look just like Jim Carrey's Grinch. I'm shocked they got away with it! The mean one is a low, low, low budget movie. It started as a fake trailer director Stephen Lamorte made for fun. Everyone loved it, and so many people were asking, well, when is the movie coming out? Like, well, no, that that was it. That, that, was, that was the whole thing. Like, just the trailer. Thanks to internet comments, they stretched it into a feature film, which required Lamorte and his team to get creative. We are a, uh, a tiny micro-budget movie. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so like, the true independent, you know, it's... Uh, a handful of my friends, our crew's maybe like 15 or so. That meant people doubling up on positions and crew members standing in as extras. Even this little guy got involved. I'm not gonna pretend you won't notice the budget. The movie looks cheap and feels amateur, but it's buoyed by David Howard Thornton's excellent performance as the mean one. Thornton is best known for playing Art the Clown in the Terrifier films, but while the mean one is pretty violent, he's ironically nowhere near as mean as Art. He has moments of humanity, especially near the end, and Thornton rises to the occasion, playing the emotions just as as well as all the physical stuff we know he's more than capable of. This movie isn't good, but I do find it likable. Maybe it's because I'm more forgiving when it comes to filmmaking these days. Or maybe it's because we hosted a screening and Q&A at Season Screamings last year. The filmmakers were uniformly lovely and happy to be there. And a lot of them, including the leading actress, come from the stunt world, which is cool. Of course it's trying to make bank off a recognizable property, but they're also having fun with it. Plus, it may be cheesy, but it does have holiday cheer. It feels more Christmassy than most Christmas horror, so if you're looking for Yuletide, this'll do the job. It stalls out more and more the further along it gets, but at least it ends with a nice punctuation that got a genuine laugh out of me. Also, I want to thank director Stephen Lamorte for sending me an advanced copy copy of a 45 minute making of documentary. It's still being edited, thus the lack of backgrounds and interviews, but it was hugely helpful. It should be part of a special edition Blu-ray sometime in 2024, so keep an eye out for that if you like seeing how indie films get made. How many kills can one meanie greeny monster leave for us under the... Santa? Oh, hi Jamothy! <laughs> Didn't see you there. This is my set, what are you doing here bud? Uh, well, actually, I've been traveling the globe trying to find places to stream all my Christmas movies. It's a pain in the ass. Oh, Santa, you don't need to travel the globe to do that. You just need today's sponsor, NordVPN. Is that some kind of sleigh or something? <laughs> no, you stupid Santa. NordVPN is a virtual private network that lets you connect to servers all over the planet. So you can enjoy instant access to hundreds of streaming sites worldwide. I mean, just picture it. You can virtually be in Switzerland watching Better Watch Out, or in Germany watching Anna and the Apocalypse. And if you want something a bit less horror-filled, you can check out How the Grinch Stole Christmas from Mexico. Wow, that sounds muy bueno! And you can use it for more than just streaming. It can also save you money. As I'm sure a well-traveled man like you knows, prices can vary by region. But with Nord, you can get access to the best pricing options across tons of products, like games, movies, or even plane tickets for those holiday trips home, you know? No? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you for all that information, you wonderful man. That's almost enough to get you right off that naughty list. Well, thank <laughs> Wait, what? Now I'm going home to watch White Christmas on American Netflix from the comfort of the North Pole. But Santa, what? Why am I on the- That Danny K sure is dreamy! Why am, I, why am I on the naughty list? Sam, why am I on the naughty- I'm not naughty. I'm not, I'm not naughty! You can virtually travel the world as fast as Santa with a two-year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months free when you use nordvpn.com slash deadmeat. And with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, it's risk-free. That's nordvpn.com slash deadmeat, or click the link in the description below. How many kills can one meanie greeny monster leave for us under the tree? Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins with a familiar Christmas tale about Cindy You-Know-Who. Just like we've heard before, she fixes a thieving Grinch through the power of love. She killed him with kindness and surprisiest of surprises. I forgive you. 
That one simple kiss made his heart grow three sizes. But apparently we've been lied to about this tale, cause shit really went down like this. Oh, get away from my daughter! I find this realistic depiction of a Grinch encounter hilarious. Cindy, get back, he's a monster! But it ain't chuckle fucks for Cindy when her mom is killed during the tussle via neck impalement. Cindy cries out, monster! And the movie cries out, title card! We get some good looking establishing shots of the Grinch's mountain and Newville, the Whoville equivalent suburb, but don't get too used to the scale of things. The movie can't afford it for too long. 20 years after her mom died, Cindy's a grown-ass woman singing Christmas songs with her dad. They're cheesy. This whole thing is. Welcome to Newville, bitches! Cindy's return for, what else, closure, after living a life of trauma because of the whole mommy murdering monster mix-up. She and her dad return to their old home so they could sell it and move on, but the place still hits her in the face with memories. And bats! It's just a bad vibes incubator here. Sorry, Sin. She meets the Newville Police Department, which consists of a handsome deputy named Burke and Sheriff Hooper. Cindy knows Hooper from the night of her mom's murder, when he gave her a gaslighting life mantra. I need to hear you say it, sweetie. Monsters aren't real. He blamed the monster madness on a green ski mask they found, but never caught the supposedly human Christmas killer. No wonder she and her dad aren't big fans. Hooper is to New Villain Christmas, as John Lithgow is to the Footloose Town and dancing. They don't allow that shit here, so this Santa looking motherfucker better watch out. Wait, wait, who, who even was that? Why did it fade out? <laughs> even though they're selling the place, Cindy and her dad get up to some good trouble when they deck their house out in Christmas cheer. Looking good. Nice. Oh, I'm sorry, looking nice. Nice enough to dance around with absolutely no music playing for like way too long. Cindy's dad Lou is played by Flip Kobler, who co-wrote the script with his son Finn. The elder Kobler also co-wrote The Lion King 2 with his wife Cindy Marcus, who was pregnant with Finn at the time. Talk about the circle of life. Their Christmas spirit attracts a mountaintop menace, who can sniff out all things Christmas and kills anyone responsible. Cindy gets locked out of the house, and that's when her dad is attacked. Oh great, now she's gonna have double trauma, unless he can survive? Oh fuck, he ain't surviving that! Cindy loses another parent, and the culprit once again gets away. She ends up in the hospital, where she's visited by Mayor Margie McBean. <laughs> Why are you so scared of McBean, Sin? She's just here campaigning. The mayor doesn't like Cindy's talk of green monsters, since her childhood claim is what caused the town to stop celebrating the holiday. McBean bounces over to Sheriff Hooper and complains that Cindy's presence threatens the town. So, uh, take care of that, would you, champ? Mayor McBean is played by Amy Schumacher, one of the movie's producers. She previously worked with Lamorte on a Powerpuff Girls fan film, which was also written by Flip Kobler and also co-starred Cindy's actress Crystal Martin. Lamorte compares his cast and crew to a family, and not only because they've worked together on so many projects. We don't just make movies together, we, you know, get together for Thanksgiving and we go to each other's shows and comedy shows and burlesque shows. In Schumacher's case, the family comparison became literal when she and Lamorte got married earlier this year. Congrats! With her dad dead, Cindy plans to leave town, even though Deputy Burke would prefer she stay. These two make for a cute couple. Sir, ma'am, um, Miss Cindy. <clears throat> Too bad right now, he's still in the handshake zone. Maybe he can win her over with his homemade matzo ball soup. You made this? Probably Jewish. Did I mention he's Jewish? Because the movie does, like, a lot. <laughs> Jewish. It's in my blood. Cindy finds some floral evidence at the crime scene, and one computer screen transition later, she's at the Newville Mountains. Now ain't that a smart little Vestigo monster hunting in? While playing Grinch Miss Snap, Cindy gets attacked and knocked into a cavern. Yo, this cavern has a license? Yeah man, a license to kill! It uses it on a hiking couple. Cindy watches as the monster kills this Daryl guy in a bunch of incomprehensible close-ups. Thankfully, when Cindy yells at the Grinch, we do get to see a money shot. And this hilarious Home Alone 2 moment. You're real! <laughs> she domes that motherfucker with those rocks. <laughs> the mean one's excellent makeup was done by effects artist Tatiana Bluchel, who created prosthetics that allowed David Howard Thornton to emote. Besides the, you know, the lack of air holes, it was very functional. The process took three to four hours to complete. Every fleck of dirt, every inch of coloration to really bring the creature to life. I mean, she hand painted his teeth. Cindy's eyewitness account and blurry Sasquatch pictures don't convince Sheriff Hooper, who tells her not to ruin their town again. You ended Christmas. Hey, that's not true. Look, SantaCon is coming to town. For those of you who didn't know, like me, SantaCon is a real event that started in San Francisco in 1994. It's since expanded to other cities, with New York sporting the largest con, once described as an annual drunken shit show. This smaller gathering is no different. It's a bunch of drunk ass Santas. Just gross, gropey Santas. <laughs> I'm already counting these bastards in my head. I do love the passed out elf who wakes up to cheer for more drinks, only to immediately pass out again. 
Hans von. The put upon waitress enters a freezer and discovers one of the Santas dead with an icicle in his neck. She gets locked inside as the Grinch prepares to take care of the other Santas and elves. This monster acting is what they paid David Howard Thornton to do, folks. His mime training gets put to good use here as he perfectly imitates Jim Carrey's cartoonish performance. The kill montage that follows sees the entire Christmas crowd killed, which amounts to, I believe, five more Santa dudes, four elf ladies, and this big old inflatable Christmas tree guy. It's pretty fun to see him get slaughtered. Some of the kills are good, but the whole scene has a quiet piano backing that kind of sucks the energy out of it. It's also brought down by the awful CG blood, which is likely the result of the movie's severely crunched post-production schedule. I mean, its whole production schedule was rushed. They didn't start shooting until seven months before the film's release. Thankfully, the movie's biggest set piece ends with a funny button after the innocent waitress gets out of the freezer and finds all the Santa Connors dead. <laughs> This merry massacre was overseen by stunt coordinator Terence J. Rotolo, who seems like an intense guy. Making a film is like going to war, and when you go to war, you go with friends. The intensity probably helped with their shooting schedule, though, since the SantaCon sequence was filmed with 14 stunt performers in a single day. Cindy continues to cause trouble for the mayor and sheriff Hooper, while the Grinch continues to cause trouble for her. All this Grinching puts her on edge, and she ends up punching an innocent man in the face. Who are you? Guy who just saved your life? Oh yeah, it's that guy! His name's Doc Zeus, get it? Like Dr. Seuss? And he's been watching Cindy in between his drinking bouts at Horton Hears a Cry for Help. He confirms the monster is real. He's got illustrated evidence. Lamorte initially intended on keeping the mean one's existence ambiguous, which is why you don't see him for most of the first act. But thanks in part to the success of Terrifier 2, Thornton's mean one became the face of the film. I don't think any one of us on the cast or crew was expecting the internet to explode like it did when they released the first picture. The increased publicity also meant the movie would have a bigger audience. We had way more eyes on us in this film than I initially thought. I was terrified. Production planned for a streaming release, but the mean one ended up opening in 160 theaters and got five extensions during its run. Cindy asks Doc what the monster is, and he almost gets him sued. Finch! Order from Mike Finch! He goes by a lot of names. They settle on calling him the mean one, and Doc knows personally how mean he can be. Once upon a time, his wife tried to mail some Christmas presents, only to get tackled and torn asunder by the monster. Just straight up cut in half, my god! I love actor John Bigham in this role. He's a highlight of the film, even if he's the one tasked with hanging all the lampshades about the movie's inspiration. He's a mean one, that Mr. Bitch! Last call for my well, him and this bartender, played by Rachel Winfrey, who was actually in How the Grinch Stole Christmas as one of the Grinch's adoptive moms. Sheriff Hooper still won't listen to Cindy, even though it's clear that he and the mayor are co-conspirators. Truth is bound to see the light of day. Then extend the night. Wow, that dialogue was bad. But regardless, sounds like they know the truth about a certain sassy monster man. Deputy Burke is still in the dark, but he wants to help Cindy. So he spelunks into the cavern she found and starts robbing it blind. Haha, <laughs> good score there, kid. That's a ton of wallets. Shame about all the body parts, though. Which I won't count as kills, since they're just a bunch of frozen skelly bones. Hilariously, this cave was built inside writer Flip Kobler's living room. All of this is going to get a light spray painted touch. We're going to put a light up on the ceiling to simulate the hole, and this is gonna be the creature's lair. Love the DIY filmmaking. After a near run-in with the monster, Burke finally believes Cindy, and that's enough to turn this PG-rated shower scene into something more PG-13. Lamorte wanted the mean one to feel like Hallmark horror, with plenty of schlocky and romantic elements. But right when things are getting steamy, the Grinch shows up and blows a blood nut everywhere, <laughs> ruining the mood. I'm sorry. Turns out this was just a nightmare, but nobody interrupts Cindy's wet dreams. I'm gonna kill it. Thus begins a training montage set to music that may or may not be Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I, I honestly don't care enough to look it up. I, I want to like them, but they just don't rock hard enough for me. The montage is still fun thanks to Cindy's actor Crystal Martin, a stunt performer who's doubled for Ronda Rousey before. That didn't surprise me one bit after watching this scene. It's uncanny how much she ends up looking like her. Put the belt on this woman, Hunter! A guy named Don accidentally gets a box of Jingle Bells when he ordered bell peppers, but mailing mishaps ain't no excuse for the mean one. He fingertips across the floor and steals a cleaver that he then uses to stab Don in the head. But that's 
not enough of a kill for the mean one. I mean, we are talking about Art the Clown, kind of. And so Don ends up losing some limbs and ultimately his head. Burke matches the IDs he found in the cave wallets to missing hikers, and on their Facebooks, he finds pictures with a Grinch in the background. These awful photoshops got a pretty big laugh at our screening. Burke learns that the hikers came to the Newville Mountains thanks to a website owned by none other than Mayor McBean. She's lured these people to their deaths like a musical fruit. It's a twist in line with her Susie and surname McBean, which comes from a colorful con artist in the Sneetches and other stories. These references are friggin' everywhere, from the redfish bluefish to the license that he found in the cave. It belongs to a Walter Mulberry which I believe is a reference to and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. McBean tries to skip town to some gentle narration. When leaving behind both our fears and our sorrows, remember, nights get real dark before brighter tomorrows. I love the VO by actor Christopher Sanders. It really ties together the movie's Grinchmas theme. Her car breaks down and inexplicably starts playing Christmas music, causing the monster to appear and give her an oral buckle fat removal. He uses her own stickers against her, then kills her by slamming her trunk door down onto her head. Repeatedly, like until it falls off. For her death scene, Schumacher took a gnarly fall on the ground without pads. She wasn't the only cast member who had to step up. Burke's actor Chase Mullins used a spelunking system, rigged and tested by Crystal Martin, despite his fear of heights. I'm still coming down from the adrenaline high of <laughs> doing that. Burke's unable to stop Cindy Lou Amendment 2 from leaving to hunt down the monster. I don't need your permission. He also can't stop her from quoting the big Seuss's musings on his own creation. Maybe it's because his head isn't screwed on quite right. Maybe it's because his shoes are too tight. He lets her be and confronts Sheriff Hooper about the mayor's shitty web design. The sheriff admits he saw the mean one himself 20 years ago. Not when Cindy's mom died, but when he found a girl named Stephanie getting killed in a cave by a furry green monster. His solution was to appease the monster, feeding it goats like it were a T-Rex. But the mean one wanted human snacks, so Mayor McBean created her little human flytrap website. And when the mayor found out that thing needed to be fed, we did what we had to do. The plan worked, and it's kept Newville safe at the low, low cost of hiking tourist lives. Oh yeah, and Christmas, that, that had to go too. Burke leaves to go to the mountain where he falls into a monster trap and gets his ankle chomped on. Rawr. Without force powers to reach his weapon, he'll stand no chance against this Wampa. Oh, wait a minute, Wampa wants to kiss. He's saved by Sheriff Hooper shooting the Grinch away. No, come back, David, the movie's only good when you're around. Hooper's here with a face turn, resolving to track down the monster he should have dealt with long ago. Deep in the cave, he shoots at the mean one who Bob's out of the way with ease, but he gets killed when the monster charges at him in a close-up. Burke gets dismembered and turned into a CGI blood snack. Cindy and Doc return to the movies so they can help Burke back to his car, and so Cindy can take back the leading role. Time to roast this beast. She sets a festive trap at her home with the boringest light display I've ever seen. Quantity doesn't mean quality, people. It's enough to lure the mean one inside, though, because this green dumb idiot doesn't realize it's a trap. Guess who? The Grinch starts eating sniper rounds, courtesy of a drunken Santa lookalike. Merry Christmas, you green bitch! Cindy's got a treat for him to suck on, too, but the monster disappears before she can stick him with her candy cane. He reappears in front of Doc Zeus and mauls the poor old drunk guy a bit, but then he disappears again and Doc survives, so, uh, it's okay. I I guess? Take your ornaments and get out of here, Sin. She fights the Grinch outside using various weapons. Christmas light baseball bats, more candy cane guns, just, uh, standard bear traps. That one got him! Those ornaments she's packing are grenades, turns out, and a digital explosion leads us back inside where the fight continues. Stunt coordinator Rotolo had already worked with Martin before and knew she could handle anything he threw at her. I'd trust her too. She did stunts on Malignant! Thornton did a few of his own stunts, but mostly relied on his double Robin Akerstrand, with whom he became good friends. We think a lot of like too, so we would bounce ideas off each other, and you know, that was a lot of fun. Cindy lights a garland fuse that sets off a Christmas tree bomb? Oh man, that fake fire looks so bad. Right when she's ready to end things, she sees something peculiar. The monster has kept the necklace she gave him 20 years ago. The mean one has just been misunderstood. He didn't mean to kill her mom, and when she called him a monster! He just leaned into it, I guess. Cindy forgives him with a sweet widow cheek kiss, which the monster seems to appreciate. True to the classic tale, his heart starts growing three sizes. But in a hilarious twist, that means it grows so big, it simply bursts in his chest. I died laughing at this when I first saw it. It is a great way for the Grinch to die. A denouement shows us the mean one's gone viral thanks to Cindy's blurry picture. Did you see this photo? This looks like it's gonna be my best friend. We see an amateur sketch of the monster in reference to one of the best internet videos ever. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. All you gotta do is look up in the tree. Who else seen the leprechaun say yeah? Yeah! yeah! Lamonte even replicates that line in a cameo. I mean, it looked like a monster to me. Who else on the mean one say yeah? Yeah! Also, is it just me or is that guy a dead ringer for Johnny Gargano? I mean, he clearly knows all about DIY. 
filmmaking. The rumor of a mountain monster brings a ton of outsiders to town, and the tourism brings Christmas cheer back to Newville in the form of cheap licensed stock footage. <laughs> Seriously, that is clearly not the same town, and that is not the same mountain, come on! <laughs> in any case, the movie ends with Cindy and Burke smooching beneath the mistletoe. The Grinch hated Christmas, but he loved getting kills. Let's find out how many. Oh, the numbers will count. James went to go count with a bounce and a leap, while the mean one appeared in a costume so cheap. Now why was he here? The audience did ask, but no answer was clear through that shitty ass mask. Was he here to host kill counts, American or foreign? Nope, he's just goofing. Cause this Grinch? is Zorin. Merry Christmas, everyone! And happy Hanukkah and happy Kwanzaa and anything else you celebrate. I counted 20 kills in the mean one, consisting of 11 male victims, eight female victims, and one unidentifiable person as a Christmas tree. Thanks to them, our pie chart here has a piney pie wedge. Tastes like gin! With a runtime of 92 minutes, we had a kill on average every 4.6 minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to the mean one. It suffers from bad CG blood like most of the movie, but man, is that a hilarious take on the heart growing three sizes thing. Double Shetty for lamest kill will go to Daryl the Hiker, cause I'm not a fan of rapid cuts between close-ups where I can't tell what's going on. And that's it. The mean one came out in 2022, a year stacked with amazing horror movies. And this one. Since Sunday is Christmas Eve, I've got a present for you. A bonus kill count for Treevenge. But until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Christmas Kill Count for the mean one. I always love looking at holiday horror movies, and with Christmas, there is no fucking shortage of a man. Like one year, I would like to eventually get to Anna and the Apocalypse. And of course, there are a few more recent ones that I know a lot of you want me to cover. So fingers crossed for 2024. In fact, fingers crossed for 2024 all around. I hope it's uh, much better than 2023. This year has sucked. <laughs> but it has sucked less thanks to patrons such as Mike Alkus, Sarah Hanslick, John Thrasher Thiel, Caden Miller, King Corpse, Ajax27, Carter Hackley, and Dad Stash. Thanks everyone. Have a happy holiday season and be good people.